So cool. So what you're looking at here is field audit trail cockpit running in a demo org, and we're going to look at how those history retention policies that I described work. So a history retention policy has four components to it. It has how many months do you want the information to live in the online history related list, like at the bottom of the record there. How many years do you want to store that information so it's accessible, but it's not user facing, so that's the archive after or the archive retention years. Um, how long do you want to wait before we start enforcing this policy? That's the grace period. And then finally, there's a, a, a place in the metadata um, definition where you can basically put in just a description that says, why did you define this policy? So for instance, at the account level, if you wanted to say, um, we want to retain information in the online history list for 15 months, and I only want to keep it in my organization for five years, no longer. And I want that to take effect immediately. And uh, you know, we want to do this because there's sensitive information included in this object. You can make those changes directly in the field audit trail cockpit. Uh, just hit update policies and we'll take care of all that stuff on the back end. Now, this is really important to note that if you already got field audit trail and you're not seeing these in the setup menu or anything, um, that's because they're not there. Uh, history retention policies are only available via the metadata API at this time. And that can kind of scare some folks away. Maybe you're a little API shy, you don't have a developer handy. Um, that's really where this piece of field audit trail cockpit comes in to really kind of help make that a lot easier. So you're not waiting for developers to do stuff and how do you prove that they even did it because they're sending your XML files back, things like that. So that's cool. But taking it one step further, how do you know that you're actually tracking any information? You can define policies all day long, but if you're not tracking any fields, it's not going to do anything. So um, what we do is we give you the ability to see every single field on all of your objects um, right here on one screen. And you can write in here, if you're using Shield Security Cockpit, one of our other products, to classify your information, you can see how that information has been classified in your org and what how important it is, things like that. And you can also update these checkboxes right here. So what you might, might notice is some of these little frowny faces over here on the left, right? So what these frowny faces tell you is that within Shield Security Cockpit, you classified some fields in this object as being high-risk fields, but you're not tracking the data. And from a data loss prevention perspective, that might be risky for you. So here on the contact, we can see that assistant was classified as confidential, as well as other phone and other address. So I've checked those boxes here, and instead of jumping out to the object manager, I can just go update them directly on the object right here in the field audit trail cockpit, and it's gonna take care of all the back end stuff for me. So that now my fields are being tracked. Um, so now you can see that my frowny face is gone, things are good, and we're in a much better position. So now that you've got that information, uh, or you've got those history retention policies to find. We got a question. We got a question. Yeah, coming out of Jacksonville. I don't have this product. How do I do it without it? Yeah, it really. Uh, so for that piece, it really Good is question. all about the metadata API. Yeah. Uh, if you're a developer, you can pull down your object definitions, and there's an XML, a set of XML tags that you can insert into it and then deploy via the metadata API. If you're not a developer, you can just say those words to a developer and have them do it. Um, so that's uh, that's really your only option right now. Yeah, or you can go into the app exchange and get the history retention policy manager, the basic version mm -hmm. of Field Audit Trail Cockpit for free. Yeah, so you can go download it now for the basic version. Mm -hmm. Tell your friends. Yeah, for that first uh, so that first tab is part of our basic Field Audit Trail Cockpit offering, and yeah, that's up on the app exchange now. So you can go ahead and throw it in your org, configure your history retention policies. Um, make sure you're tracking all the right fields and be in a good shape. Um, and that really is, you know, when we when we talk about the, uh, the the headline of the webinar is how do we implement field audit trail in eight minutes? Uh, I think we did it in way less than eight minutes. So. <laughs> but, but basically, that's that's what we're talking about. And at that point, you're doing stuff, and that's cool. Um, and so now, as you've got those policies implemented, and that data is getting copied down to the archive object as time goes on get into that information can be a little tricky and so that's where we start to see some of the premium features of the of the app so we give you this field history explorer so you can go pull up any record and you'll be able to see all of the history information both from the online table as well as the offline table 
Um, in here, you can also revert any old changes that you don't want to, uh, that, that maybe somebody inadvertently changed something incorrectly. You can revert those directly within the product. Um, you can see things over time by field. So you can see all the times that the phone number was changed, for instance, or by user. So you can see that uh, Pete Thurston was a particularly shady character. That, that would be me. Um, <laughs> you can see all the, all the changes he's made to this record. And then we took it one step further and said, okay, well, cool, but what if I just want to see all of my history on the record instead of having to jump around? So what we do is we've, in the, the latest version of the premium offering, we package in this lightning component that you can drop on any lightning page, and it'll show the full history, both from the online as well as the offline, and still able to be sliced and diced by those three lenses. So you see a very similar approach. Um, and what a lot of our customers are doing is basically just replacing the history related list with this uh, lightning component. If you're not using lightning, if you're still on classic, which is totally common, um, we have a way that you can embed this uh, into your page layouts directly. So again, you can remove the history related list and just throw this into the bottom of the page layout and you'll be in good shape and have the full history of all time as opposed to just the whatever is the online or the 18 months uh, if you're using standard field history tracking. So that's what we had to show. Yeah. yeah. My favorite question oh, of the week, the question here from San Diego was, how so fast? <laughs> there are several customers this week that were amazed with the responsiveness of, of the data. So how so fast, Pete? And there is another question here coming, but we'll do that one first. Yeah, it's um, so it is pretty, uh, it is really fast. And what we love about it is um, big objects, so the archive information that's stored um, off in the big object. One of the really cool things about big objects is that they're a NoSQL um, database. So um, if you're a developer, if you're a, a nerd like me, then you're familiar with NoSQL databases and that client speeds are very, very quick, as long as you construct the queries really intentionally. So if you're very careful about the way you do it, then um, you can make those that data return. Makes sense. Uh, question, what does the paid version give you that the free version does not? Great question. Yeah, so the free version includes um, this history retention policy manager tab um, and everything you see on it. So you have the ability to go configure retention policies, track your fields, do all that good stuff. If you um, have the need to actually work with and access that information after it gets archived, that's where the premium version comes in. So the premium version is gonna give you the Field History Explorer uh, tab inside the app, as well as the embeddable Field History uh, Explorer that you can see at the record level, the full history for, for a record. When we purchase the uh, Field Audit Trail feature, uh, will the data, and use the, the default retention values, will the data and history object be available as long as configured? by the retention policy or only 18 months? So when you purchase Field Audit Trail, the default retention policies that are defined are 18 months of online history, which is the same thing you get with standard uh, FA, uh, field history tracking, and 10 years of offline. So um, starting with spring 19, that will start to get enforced, and you'll basically have 18 months. Um, like if you look at my screen, you'll have 18 months worth of history in this table, or 10 years worth of history in our Lightning component. Um, as things start to get deleted, this will just continually trim itself down to 18 months or whatever you configure the retention policies to be. Perfect. And all right, we're going to call it on questions. Uh, Pete and Brian with RevCult, RevCult.com resources to see all of our past uh, content and the things we're doing across uh, the Salesforce ecosystem from a security and privacy standpoint. With that, let's uh, get to hack time. Hack time. Hack time. It's a Friday, so I'm going to go backwards. <laughs> I don't know if that's legal. Nice. Wow. 